Hello YouTube, this is Tom, or Fix That Prius. You might me, might know me from my uh, engine swap videos. This is my garage. Um, I was working on my car. Uh, when you do an engine swap, people tell you you're crazy, you tell you you can't do it, tell you it's not going to work, you're going to have all kinds of problems. But there's one thing you have to remember when you do do an engine swap. It, you know, if that... It, is it? It's not going to fix. Uh, it's not going to fix your bad brakes. It's not going to fix your air conditioning. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that uh, is like my car has like 250,000 miles on it. I don't expect it to fix everything. Although there was nothing wrong with my car when I swapped out the engine, except for it was burning a lot of oil, which made me angry. So anyway. <sighs> So, um, uh, maybe you guys know, I don't know, I've been posting on Prius chat how, uh, you know, my heater's not really working very well. And um, I swapped out the antifreeze because um, when I did the engine swap, I just poured whatever I had back in. Whatever came out, I poured it back in. And um, it wasn't enough, so I added some distilled water. And, uh, you know, I knew I was going to have to do a change but i just want to get the car running you know so uh so that's what i did so when it got really cold here i'm in chicago or i'm in i'm near chicago i'm in aurora you know this is what aurora looks like you know it's very nice here i like it here anyway um it's cold here in chicago and uh you know hence the the hat it's, you know it's russian whatever so um the heater wasn't working too good that that made me mad and then um i swapped out the antifreeze i put some good stuff in there and uh it was like five degrees outside and my antifreeze was was good to five degrees it might have been zero you know so uh i i thought all kinds of bad stuff must have happened to my car because the heat didn't work and then it started overheating you know, of course, uh, my boss, Scott, hey, Scott, my boss, Scott, he says, just change the thermostat. The car's overheating. It's just like any other car. Just change the thermostat. Well, you guys might know the thermostat is kind of a pain in the ass to get to. The, the clamp, i show you. There's the thermostat right there. Uh, here's the pump. Here's the thermostat. And the clamp to this m -F -er, is way the f under there plus you got the bottom i took the bottom off you got the bottom pan you got to take off and all that kind of crap so um as a nod to scott uh yesterday i changed the thermostat i had i had one from uh, autozone or something and uh, i changed that out but guess what scott it didn't work okay it was still overheating all right so um i had plan b I had I had already done all kinds of crazy stuff. I was putting clamps on hoses. I was bleeding air out. I'm doing crazy, weird stuff, right? Because uh, you know any experiment's a good experiment. You get a result, even if it's stupid and crazy. Uh, but um, it it adds to your knowledge base too. Okay, so um, I thought, well, maybe. Maybe the antifreeze froze when it was uh, polar vortex here. I mean, people throw that word around a lot, or that uh, that phrase. Anyway, so maybe the um, maybe the catalytic converter heat exchanger, maybe that froze up and now it's got a little leak, lets air in or exhaust in or something like that. Or maybe the the EGR cooler, maybe that maybe that uh, got frozen and opened up a little crack or something. I don't know. Yeah, uh, you know what? I, all I know is it's not working the way it should. Okay, so you have to you have to eliminate stuff to to rule it out. Okay, so I made a little U bend pipe um, to bypass the catalytic converter heat exchanger, and uh, you know what? It didn't fix it. Uh, you know, but. Now it's not connected. It's not part of the system, and it's not part of the problem. So I can eliminate that. I can't eliminate the hoses because I purposely left the hoses so that um, I wouldn't like disconnect the 
the thing and say, oh, that's not it, and then still have a problem that's related to it because it might be a hole in the hose or something. If there was a pinhole or something, I don't know. If you don't know, you don't know. You can't rule anything out. You have to rule it out scientifically, okay? So um, then I thought, you know what? Maybe it's the uh, EGR cooler. I should bypass that. That that was um, that was interesting. Let me show you. Let me show you what that looks like. That looks like this. See this pipe here? Uh, I know you guys are gonna say that's a pipe from Home Depot. Well, it kind of is. It kind of is a pipe from Home Depot. So this line goes to the thermostat down here. Okay. This line goes to the through to the throttle body. Here we are. We're going back. This is like doing my old videos again. Okay, I got the, um, the EGR cooler is unplugged because I didn't connect the EGR cooler to the manifold yet. It's, uh, you know what, I, I didn't have enough room here with this, with this pipe here to get the, you know, it would, something would smash something here. You know, you had to cut the little thing out of there to get the EGR cooler in the first place. Now we're jamming something back in there. Okay, so anyways, unplugged only because only because I can't get the bolts lined up for the, the intake manifold. I don't want to break more stuff. Oh, also, just in passing, I'd like to mention that um, I had antifreeze all over everything, right? And I hate antifreeze. You probably know that from my videos, too. I freaking hate it. Anyway, so I power washed the whole thing at the car wash. And then, like, the next day, I'm getting all kinds of fucking trouble codes for, uh, you know, PCS, the pre-collision system, and you're, I'm getting um, hybrid system fucking warnings and shit. This stuff drives me crazy, and I hope it's not related to any of the work I'm doing. I, I think it is related to the power washing, because I had literally no issues except for no heat and overheating uh, before the power washing. So I had no ABS problems. I had no um, hybrid problems. I had no battery problems. I had no um, no pre-collision system problems or whatever. So today, okay, yeah, today I put the, the old water pump back in. If anybody knows, that is a 2012 water pump. And here's the 2016 water pump. Okay, and here's the, the original Toyota uh, thermostat that didn't work. Uh, Scott, uh, I don't know if you owe me money on that one. But uh, we had a little bet on something. Um, so there, there's the 2016 water pump. It's slightly smaller. And uh, the, the other one's taller uh, to some extent. So um, guess what? I got a new water pump that's still good. And I got a thermostat, an original thermostat, that is still good. Because that wasn't the problem. Neither one of those were the problem. So then I decided I'll switch. I'll switch the hoses on the... On the heat exchanger, because, oh, here's some of my handiwork here. See how I bypassed the EGR cooler? Anyway, so I decided to reverse the the hoses for the heater core, because I figured, well, if it's clogged, why not reverse it and make it go the other way? Well, I still it was still overheating. I mean, it was a great idea, but was still overheating. So then my last idea, because um, when all else fails, you have to eliminate everything. Even the fucking homemade pipes and shit. I don't know. Well, I didn't eliminate the homemade pipe because I ran through it. So here, what I got here is I got my... You just consider this to be the EGR cooler, okay? Because otherwise you're going to be like, hey, what about that? Why is that hooked up to whatever? So anyway... So this I got plugged off with a pair of vice grips because the water would just run out of the bottom of that pipe because of the pipe that I'm using. Also, I wanted to get this um, temperature sensor. I wanted to keep that in the mix because if you if you cut that out, then I don't know what happens. Does it does it just recognize the other one? Does it not average? Does it average it to zero? Do you got one going zero and one going 230 degrees? I mean, I don't know. Um, oh man, so I bypassed it, so I'm going from the engine, you got the little gooseneck down there, that hose comes up here, 
right here and that would normally go to your your heater but I got it going to my temperature sensor which goes down to my fake out of a um, of an EGR cooler and then that's plugged there so the water has to go from the engine directly back to the throttle body and the thermostat okay and guess what happens when I do that <sighs> no more overheating the car doesn't overheat anymore uh, so um, for all you guys out there who have used uh, bars leaks or I don't know just got dirt in your fucking system I don't know man all you guys who have you you know it, it ends up somewhere it's probably all in my uh, I didn't I, I bought this car used about a year ago uh, you know what not even a year ago maybe uh, eight or nine months ago anyway um, so, uh, if there was ever bars leak in here, it's probably clogged up in the heater core. Now, I don't want to run with no heat forever. Um, I really like having heat. That's, uh, I'm in Chicago. Remember, I said I'm in Chicago. It's freaking cold here. Well, it is cold here. We still got, like, snow. We still got ice in the planter. Okay? We still got snow on the ground. See, there's snow there. Okay? It's freaking cold here. I don't want to go without heat. I, I was thinking all winter of getting like a, a like a massive inverter and doing like electric heat for my car. I still might do that if I can't find another way around this thing. So um, before I put everything back the way it was, I'm going to uh whew. I, I I think I'm gonna get a drill pump. And I'm going to get some hoses, and I'm going to fill that full of uh, water. I don't know, antifreeze? I don't know, water. If it doesn't get too cold, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. It's kind of it's kind of cold here still. Uh, but it's clearing up. It's getting nice. Look. Look, it's getting nice here. That's nice for Chicago, okay? Don't make fun of my, uh, don't make fun of my weather. This freaking... It is Chicago. So anyway, back to the issue here. Uh, so I might get a drill pump and some hoses and um, hook it up to that uh, the heater core and just drive it like a um, effer. I'm gonna try not to swear because I know kids watch YouTube too. You know, so try harder later. I say a lot, a lot of a lot of nasty stuff when I get mad. Um, anyway, so. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so w w first of all, remember, when you swap your engine, it's not going to fix all the other crap that's wrong. If you got a bad catalytic converter, guess what? You still got a bad catalytic converter. If you got a leak in your, your coolant system, your radiator leaks, guess what? You still got a leak in your radiator, okay? So don't get mad. Don't swap out the engine and then say, well, my hybrid battery is uh, it's not working anymore. It's got nothing to do with the new engine. You just put a new engine in it. Okay? Guess what? It doesn't burn oil anymore. Hey, yeah, that's the new that's the new engine, okay? It doesn't burn oil anymore. It doesn't freaking eat eat water. Oh man. Jeez. So please, you know, fix that Prius. All right? All right, YouTube, we're going to go back out and uh, I'm going to try to put my car back together. Uh, okay, I want to show you some of my handiwork here since uh, I made mention of it, but I didn't show you. So here's, uh, here's a bypass of the catalytic converter heat exchanger see that that's my bypass that I created well, if you get the idea I don't have a lot of room under here so that's what I did now this thing 
this little heat shield gets keeps your hand from going in there uh, I don't know I don't think that's what it was designed for but effectively that's what it does it keeps your hand from going in there so what you do you pop these rivets off here just the two just these two and then you bend it back a little bit it's not gonna hurt anything because it's made of aluminum it's like tin foil so um, that's what I did to eliminate my catalytic converter heat exchanger or heat recovery system whatever you want to call it from my system so I could test to see if that was the cause of my overheating which it is not so I don't have to buy a new catalytic converter for $1,500 isn't that great oh geez okay well I'm gonna put it all back in the system now because I did figure out what my problem is I have a clogged heat heater core a clogged heater core the resistance is too high for the what the, the water goes through the heat the heater core then it goes through the catalytic converter heat exchanger then it goes back to the thermostat okay so if you're if you're if any part of that is clogged the water is not going to return to the heat exchanger fast enough or i'm sorry let me say that again the water's not going to return to the thermostat fast enough to heat it up to open it up so you'll have water to pump to cool the engine down so logically it makes a lot of sense logically um uh emotionally i want my heater to work so i'm kind of mad about it but at least it's not my um the heat exchanger on my catalytic converter so that's that i'm going to put it back together and um I'm not showing you a video on it, but look look at that. That's freaking bent there. That's crap. It's, someone backed over a curb or a tree or something. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to fix it. Well, maybe I'll take a hammer to it. So, uh, you know, next time I show underside, on the underside of my car, you might want to take a look over there and see if I fixed it or not. You know, make some bets on it with your friends. I don't care. Anyway. Anyway, fix that Prius.